Thanks to Huel for sponsoring this video. Currently in the United States, there is a big secret advantage for electric vehicle owners, especially Tesla owners, that nobody really talks about, and it could save someone a lot of money, especially in today's gig economy, where temporary flexible jobs are more common than ever. Now, we are living in an age where people are working for themselves more and more. And after the pandemic last year, there has been a rise in self-employment, According to the latest stats from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, as of April, the number of self-employed people in the U.S. is over 9.6 million. And March was the highest number of self-employed people in the U.S. in any given month in nearly three years. Now, there's no doubt that self-employment has its benefits, and there are numerous ways to earn income as a self-employed individual. But many people, including myself, have chosen to sign up as a worker for companies like Lyft, Uber, Amazon Flex, DoorDash, Turo, and more. This allows anyone to earn extra income in their spare time on their own schedule, which is pretty awesome. Now, the thing to note about many of these jobs, though, is that they require the use of a vehicle to drive either people or things from one location to another. And for these kinds of jobs, an electric vehicle such as a Tesla can be extremely beneficial in the long run. Now, before I continue, full disclaimer, I'm not a legal professional, and this is not tax or financial advice. Always consult your CPA for your own situation. Now, in the U.S., if you drive your car for business purposes, you're allowed to claim those business miles as deduction on your taxes, and there are two ways to claim business mileage, actual expenses or standard mileage. Now, the actual expenses method requires you to add up all the money you spent in the operation of your vehicle, and then you multiply that by the percentage of the vehicle's business use. The standard mileage method is a much simpler way of calculating the business use of your car since it doesn't require you to track individual purchases and save receipts. Instead, you simply keep track of your business mileage, then multiply that by the standard mileage rate, which in 2021 is 56 cents per mile. That essentially means every business mile traveled in a vehicle counts as a 56 cent expense to offset the income from that business. For example, if I go out for a few hours and I pick up Uber and Lyft riders, I can use a free app called Stride to automatically track the miles that I drive picking up riders, and I can claim those miles as a business expense. The interesting thing, though, is that the standard mileage rate was originally meant to offset the cost of operating a typical vehicle, such as insurance premiums, gas prices, maintenance costs, and depreciation. But with an electric vehicle, there are no gas costs and usually very little maintenance costs, so the standard mileage rate is quite generous for EVs compared to gas cars. And as far as I know, the standard mileage rate is the same for all vehicle types, gas, hybrid, or electric. So if you're driving an electric vehicle for business, instead of buying expensive gas, you're buying cheap electricity. The cost of electricity will depend on your location, but my off-peak electricity rate at home is right around eight cents per kilowatt hour, which is really cheap. So that is an advantage of where I live, but most areas should have an off-peak rate, which is a cheaper rate at night when electric cars usually charge. So check with your electric company to see if there are off-peak rates available to you. Now, if we look at my Tesla Model 3 odometer stats, the lifetime average watt hour per mile shows that my Model 3 uses 247 watt hours of electricity to travel one mile. At eight cents per kilowatt hour, my cost to travel 100 miles is right at $2. And my Model 3's estimated range on a full charge is 312 miles the last time I checked, which, by the way, is amazing after over three years of driving and hopefully others have that same experience as me, but I'll round down to 300 miles because I'm pretty sure my Tesla's battery life is above average. So to fully charge my car at home to 300 miles of range, it costs me $6. And you may be thinking, hey Andy, there are more electricity delivery fees that the company charges you extra on your bill. See, my electric company doesn't have any kilowatt hour delivery surcharges, only a small flat fee of 45 cents per day, no matter how much electricity I use. So other than any potential vampire drain, it really does cost just $6 to travel approximately 300 miles in my Tesla Model 3. Now, as you can see, I'm not a fan of fuel for vehicles, but I am a fan of fuel for humans, which is exactly what today's sponsor is. Huel stands for human plus fuel, in a perfect world, we'd all have time to prep and cook our meals with Whole Foods in order to get the complete nutrition we need, but that's not always possible, especially for someone like me who hates grocery shopping and can easily fall victim to eating an entire bag of chips in one sitting. So I'm always looking for healthy, good tasting snacks, and that's where Huel comes in. Huel Complete Protein is a 100% nutritionally complete, high protein snack made from sustainable hemp, faba, and pea protein, available in six different flavors, and I'm a big fan of strawberry shortcake. 
I've been jogging to and from the gym this summer, so that fresh strawberry taste when it's hot outside is the perfect snack to hold me over. It's loaded with 20 grams of protein per serving and contains all 27 essential vitamins and minerals. And unlike other protein I've had in the past, which were loaded with junk, Huel is low in sugar and it's a great source of vitamin D and essential amino acids. Click the link in the description below to get started with Huel's Complete Protein today and let me know in the comments which flavor you're choosing. Here's an example of how the low cost of charging my Tesla affects how much money can be saved through business mileage deductions. See, one of my self-employed side businesses is filming weddings and last month I traveled to the original land of the Irish, no, not Ireland, I'm talking about Notre Dame, Indiana, where I filmed an incredible wedding and that trip was of course a business trip. And I fully charged my Tesla at home the night before and then drove a total of 604 miles and I used the Tesla supercharger stations to recharge my car along the way. And the other secret advantage that comes into play as a Tesla owner is that I have a large amount of free supercharging from referring other owners. And even though not all Tesla owners have as many free miles as I do, there are many Tesla owners who do end up getting 1,000 free supercharging miles when using a referral link to buy a Tesla or by referring others like I have. However, Tesla does have a section in their legal document that's titled Supercharger Fair Use, and it states the following. To help ensure the superchargers are available for their intended use, unless you charge on a pay-per-use basis, we ask that you not charge your vehicle using a supercharger if your vehicle is being used as a taxi for ride sourcing or ride sharing, to commercially deliver or transport goods, for government purposes, or for any other commercial venture. This might sound like you're not allowed to supercharge for business use, but that's not really the case. See, this supercharger rule was mainly put into place for the Tesla owners from the past who were abusing their free unlimited supercharging back when Tesla offered it before they completely did away with it. The supercharger fair use policy explicitly states that it applies to Tesla vehicles with free unlimited supercharging or free supercharging for the lifetime of vehicle ownership. It states that it does not apply to the owners who are on a pay per use basis, which probably all new owners from the past few years, including me, are on. Yes, even though I have been rewarded free miles from the referral program, according to my Tesla account, my Model 3 is still considered pay per use supercharging. And this has never been an issue for me anyway because I only supercharge on long road trips. When I drive for Lyft and Uber, I never supercharge because I never drive more than 300 miles in a day for Lyft because that would be exhausting. Now, if you're driving your vehicle for ride sharing or food delivery, you can most certainly get by with just charging at home. So let's revisit my Notre Dame business trip. Based on the current standard mileage rate, I was able to claim a deduction of $338 while only spending $6 on charging. And even if I did not have free supercharging, the cost of supercharging is still cheaper than gas. And with any electric vehicle, it's possible to charge for free at certain hotels and at public parking spots, which cannot be done with a gas car. Now, to make it even weirder, if you are self-employed and have a dedicated home office, you should be able to claim a percentage of your utility bills based on the size of your home office. So for example, I have a home office where I do all my filming and editing, which is about 10% of my home's total square feet. So not only am I able to deduct my business mileage, I'm also able to deduct 10% of my electric bill each month as a business expense. And of course, the largest portion of my electric bill is from charging my Tesla. It's almost like double dipping. And as far as I know, that's just a current loophole with electric vehicles right now. Again, this is not legal advice, so always consult your tax professional, but I have a CPA who has done my taxes for years, and from the looks of it, if you own your own business or are self-employed and you need a vehicle for business purposes, an electric vehicle, and in most cases, a Tesla specifically, is one of the best options. Another advantage for ride sharing in a Tesla is that it most likely qualifies as a luxury vehicle. So not only does it save money on gas, but it also makes more money than a regular car if a rider chooses the luxury option. Now this has always seemed like a win-win in my opinion, and it's why I chose a Tesla for my business needs. Let me know what you think about this. Do you think the government will change the mileage rate for electric vehicles soon because of this? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Andy. Subscribe if you want to see more Tesla and tech videos in the future. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you in the next one.